Welcome. Oh, thank you, Kurt. Take thank it away. Yeah. Well, it is just great to be here at yet another HPE Discover, and uh, they're getting better and better. I hope to prove that to you shortly. Uh, but first, let me say I'm, I'm very uh, privileged, both professionally and personally, that my team and I can be on the forefront of taking proven enterprise class HPE IT, such as servers, storage, and systems management, and shifting them left out to the edge, the very edge that you're hearing about today. And specifically, we'll talk about an edge that's in the IoT. Now, the business values afforded by this include faster time to insight, how fast can you know what to do, and then resultingly, how fast can you take an action or time to action. In addition, great security savings are taking place if the data is kept within an environment called the edge. And also, we can lower the bandwidth costs and the connectivity usage for our customers. And this is, this is, this is really great. And in many businesses, these efficiencies are proving to take the manufacturing process to new levels of efficiency, which you'll hear shortly when we have our guest uh, join us. And in fact, why don't I ask right now Howard Heppelman, who is general manager of IoT Manufacturing Solutions, to join me right here on stage. Howard is from PTC. Welcome, Howard. It's an absolute honor to be here with you. It's great to have you and, and collaborate with you. Uh, a company as visionary and as committed to excellence as PTC. But tell us about PTC briefly. Yeah, PTC is a lead provider of software technology that enables convergence of the digital and physical worlds, empowering manufacturers to transform the way they design, manufacture, operate, and service the things that make up the Internet of Things. A very, a very visionary company, an innovator, and the cooperation and the collaboration has been great. Uh, Howard, I'm looking at this thing, it's moving, and I think the audience has shifted their attention as well. It's very interesting, it's a manufacturing floor assembly line. We have a robotic arm building something, but I see a lot of things here, the T in the Internet of Things. And these things are fully instrumented with sensors that connect to data acquisition and control systems because they're being controlled. And then it creates what we would call an industrial IoT solution end to end as we include the compute at the edge and also connectivity back to the cloud if that's needed. But tell us really what's happening here and how it relates to the industrial IoT. Yeah, exactly, Tom. So what you're looking at here is a fully automated assembly line. And as Tom said, it includes a lot of things. It has sensors and control systems. But from an IT perspective, it's also loaded with PTC's entire ThingWorks IoT platform stack, which includes edge connectivity, machine learning and predictive analytics, and augmented reality. It also includes a number of role-based apps that have been integrated with external business systems to provide real-time operational performance of visibility on the factory floor. Now, last time I checked, a software stack as robust as that needs hardware to run on. And a software stack needs data ingest. What kind of uh, data is being collected here? Yeah, exactly, Tom. This system, when it's running, generates 800 uh, data points per second. And it's all powered by this amazing HP Edgeline system that you see right here. So this is the HP converged edge system we call the EL1000. And it is handling that software stack, running uh, quite well, handling some of the big data. Now, if we multiply that big data by the number of stations, if you will, by the number of factory floors, by the number of buildings in a company, it becomes a big data problem. And it presents to us a big data problem that we can handle now at the edge and don't need to necessarily go to a data center to handle that. If you love big data, you're going to love the IoT, because it is the biggest of all of the big data that's combined. Now, tell me why, again, this particular amount of data is collected and what's happening here. Yeah, as you already indicated, most factories today are comprised of silos of OT and IT information systems. And quite frankly, the majority of the data that's generated in a factory is never even utilized. As a result, as a result factory performance management is typically based on static information or outdated information sources. PTC's IoT offerings help factory operators continuously improve operational performance by unifying these disparate sources and structures of information in real time. These offerings enable actionable intelligence through real-time role-based views of operational performance. They also provide real-time anomaly detection such as mechanical failures 
or excessive temperatures. But what's more interesting is the predictive analytics that comes with it that help us identify and forecast future issues before they result in unplanned downtime or poor quality. As I see, and all this is very, very automated, as we can see, and it's going to become very visual, and that's the new things we want to talk about today. So uh, now that you've described how this fits in, let's see exactly how this particular conveyor and manufacturing floor operation operates. So tell us how this works. Sure. Well, using my iPad, as you can see captured here on the big screen, I have a series of role-based apps, three of them. I have one for the plant manager, one for the operator, and one for the maintenance engineer. Each of these with their own views of real-time operational performance, and all of them enabled by converged OT and IT data sources. For now, let's take a quick look at the maintenance engineer's app. Right here, I see a complete list of all of the assets for which I'm responsible, including their real-time health status and any outstanding alerts or notifications. For example, we can see here that we have a maintenance work order telling us to fix a bearing problem on this system. We'll come back to that in a minute. Mm. But first, let's experiment with a live scenario and take a closer look at the pneumatic system. The key health metrics we're monitoring with the pneumatic system include airflow and pressure. And at the moment, everything looks fine as indicated by the green status symbol in the upper left-hand corner. But let's take a look at what would happen if this system had a failure. Tom, would you do me a favor and open this red escapement valve there on the corner? So my job will be to induce an error, which I'm very good at doing. <laughs> okay, what I've done here is I'm simulating an anomaly or an error. And in this case, particularly, it's an airflow error or an air leak. This is very similar to, uh, analogously, to an automobile that would have a flat tire. If it runs out of air, it stops operating. If we stop operating, we have downtime. Anyone in the manufacturing business knows that when you're down, it's quite a devastating uh, event to take care of. Loss of uh, money impacts negatively, of course, customer satisfaction, inability to fulfill, and then, of course, recognize revenue, you know, ultimately. Yeah. As Tom opened that valve, you could hear the noise, but more importantly, you can immediately see an anomaly in the airflow sensor reading. The green status symbol on our dashboard has now turned yellow, and we can see from the dial that the airflow value is now visibly outside of its normal operating range. You'll also notice that the system has auto-generated an alert notifying me of the leak. But that's not all. Our machine learning engine has also kicked in, and it's predicting that this leak will result in a pneumatic gate failure in 10 days' time. Fortunately, the system also auto-generated a maintenance work order telling me that I need to tend to this problem before it results in unplanned downtime. Okay, there are three things happening here, and, and let me unpack them you know, for you. The first thing is there's an automatic alert generated within the anomaly or failure in the system as well as visually. Secondly, there is a work order automatically logged in the system. Now, I know what you're thinking. You might be thinking, well, that's not rocket science because many systems can do that. And that's true, so it's very, very important. However, it's not necessarily the new thing that we're talking about today. But what is, is portioned into two categories. The first thing is predicting the future. You probably picked that up with Howard. Who does not want to predict the future? Mankind has been enamored with predicting the future in all aspects of our lives since the beginning of time, I think. But if you notice what's happening here, is there's a predicted 10-day window in which the repair must take place or it will have a negative effect. And what I'm saying is very profound if you dissect it and study it. It's a window of time to do the repair. Now, maintenance costs and the associated resource expenditures cost industry, without exaggeration, hundreds of millions. Those of you in this industry or in the industrial industry know that. Uh, we don't want to do maintenance. Listen, we don't want to do maintenance if we don't have to. That's a type two error. That's a waste of resource, time, and risk if it's a dangerous environment. We also don't want to neglect maintenance if it needs to be done and it gets worse and something fails. That would be called a type one error. So in order to avoid both types of errors, the prediction of the window of time in which to most optimally do the repair is needed. Now, to do that, we run very deep algorithms, as you pointed out, in machine learning, 
We run algorithms in prognostics, or the prediction of the future, prognostics, analytics, that's become a very popular term today. So we can most accurately take a lot of samples. If any of you studied statistics, the more accurate your predictions are can be based on the sample size. So we want a lot of samples, and we need high performance, deep computing power right here at the edge. And this is why we have embedded into this solution this edge line, EL1000. It has taken the proven compute power and storage, very scalable storage, and we've created the HPE edge line converged system family to do that. Okay. Hey, Tom, remember that uh, maintenance problem we saw earlier telling us that we needed to fix the, uh, the bearing leak or the bearing problem? Let's see how augmented reality can help the maintenance engineer more efficiently perform this task in a truly converged digital physical reality. Yes, yeah, so let's look at that maintenance order. And let me say now, he used the word augmented reality. Herein lies the second of the two great advancements. The first we talked about is the prediction or the prognostic analytic and its accuracy and its real time dimension. The second here is augmented reality. Let me bifurcate that. The reality part is the fact that we will do a repair on a real thing and the image of the unit under repair, as it's called, in this case, the conveyor belt, the image is the actual image of the actual unit under repair. It is not a photograph. It is not a drawing in a maintenance manual. I want that to sink in because it's very profound because it is the actual one that's happening. And let me just demonstrate, as I put my hand here, the reality part is a live image of the unit to be repaired. Now, what's the augmented part? Well, the augmented part is there will be an imposition, if you will, or a superimposition imputed right on the screen. Howard, show us that. And I want you to watch this. Now, stop texting and get off factcheck.org. This is really happening. Watch the augmented reality motion graphics. Go ahead. That shows the repair. Go ahead, and you can yeah. narrate that. Yeah, so what we see here is we've imposed the digital precise work instructions on the physical advice device. It's telling us to pull out the conveyor, to pull out the bearing, or to pull out the screws, to remove the bearing sleeve, to put the new bearing sleeve back in, and put the uh, conveyor back on. Let me do that one more time just so everybody... You know, look at this again, and, and there's, a, there's a lot to be said that it's so fast, which is why we're going to play it twice for you, because so the belt comes off, we take out the old bearing sleeve, put the new bearing sleeve on, put the bolts back in, put the new belt back on. So, so you picture, can really see how high fidelity visual information can significantly increase the efficiency of a service organization, in this case, the maintenance team in the factory. You know, as I think about this, if a picture is worth a thousand words, then a motion graphic is worth a million words. And that's the efficiency dimension. Not only will the repair be done at the right time, not too soon, not too late, but it'll be done much more efficiently by that demonstration of the fact that it's imputing the augmented reality on the actual product to be, uh, to be repaired. And I wanted to uh, just underscore that. Now, this requires, as you know, some robust computing and storage, again, at the edge. And again, the benefits afforded at the edge also include security. It also includes limited uh, uh, demand for the connectivity, uh, bandwidth costs as well. But it does beg the question as we talk about that, and let me ask you, Howard, why not just connect all these sensors directly to the cloud? Well, simply put, many factory use cases require extreme real-time response. And we can't afford the signal delay, nor can we afford the costs of moving all that data up to the cloud. I see. Also, to perform the kind of predictive analytics that we saw earlier against the large data sets that exist in a factory, you have to have significant compute power at the edge. And this is exactly why the work that you folks are doing at HPE is so critical. Yes, cloud will play a big role in IoT, but so does computing at the edge. And to realize the full potential of industrial IoT, we must have access to powerful compute and storage at the edge, the exact kind that you've seen demonstrated here with this HPE Edgeline system. So this is part of the differentiation that sets us apart in the industry with the Edgeline Converged Edge system. Together, we can offer data analytics, machine learning, real-time response, and real-time insight at the edge. Or we could go to the cloud, where there are times we want to aggregate maybe multiple disparate factories. Or we have a combination of both. So the choice to make the right economic decision uh, lies within this particular offering. And since the HP uh, e Edgeline system is built on open industry standards, and very powerful ones, 
your software stack that formerly had to run in the cloud or data center runs seamlessly and smoothly. Am I right on the edge line system? Yeah. It's, it's sort of this uniqueness that we found in this device that is the specific reason why we've been collaborating uh, with you folks and we're so excited about it. Well, one last point. You know, as, as we close this module, the convergence or the integration of OT, operational technology, sensors and control systems and data acquisition with IT, servers, storage, networking, is so important in the industrial internet of things. Tell us how you see Edgeline Systems as being on the forefront of this other part of the differentiation. Yeah, we've been at this for a while, and this Edgeline System here is the first of its kind to enable that convergence by integrating control systems and data capture in the same device as compute and storage. This converged infrastructure results in space and energy savings, higher reliability, and faster deployment times. Quite frankly, HP is the best we found in offering both this kind of innovation as well as choice and flexibility in IoT deployments. Yeah, well, thank you, thank you. That's, uh, that's very rewarding to hear, and I'm sure my team agrees with me. So the, uh, the setting apart with the data acquisition and control integrated in the same box, it's smaller, it's less energy, easy to deploy, uh, higher reliability, takes up less space. All these things are important at the edge. Howard, again, it's just great working with you, so uh, I want to thank you very much, and it's very rewarding to use our Edgeline systems with the work you're doing at PTC. Yeah, thank you, Tom. We appreciate collaborating with your team, and to the audience, let me say there are many other live scenarios that we can demonstrate with our robot and the HP Edgeline Converge Edge systems, so if you haven't had a chance yet, please visit PTC at booth 139 in the Innovation Pavilion so that we can uh, share them with you. All right, as we... Yeah, give it up for, for PTC, great, great work. Uh, let me just wrap up with one thought as we go to battle on behalf of our customers against the enemies of complexity and the enemies of inefficiencies, I'm glad we're on the same side. I just wanted to point Absolutely. that out. So thank you very much thank again. You. Great, so thank you Howard and PTC, we super appreciate it. Thank you Dr. Tom for being here. Round of applause for these guys. How cool was that demo? Awesome. Thank you. Thank you very much, thank you.